John Mutchler here and we know the adage the squeaky wheel gets the grease that comes from a poem written by an American humorist Josh Billings published in 1870 that goes like this I hate to be a kicker I hate to be a kicker and by the way a kicker this is before the NFL a kicker was someone who complained or protested or appealed uh, to bring about change I hate to be a kicker I always long for peace, but the wheel that squeaks the loudest is the one that gets the grease. Unfortunately for us today, the great noble tradition of American protest, complaining, appealing, has been pushed aside. And what we see now instead is rioting, the destruction of public and private property, fires, arson, theft, looting, intimidation, threats, council culture, bodily injury to American citizens, and even murder to bring about the ends that they want. I think most all Americans were shocked and appalled at the death of George Floyd. Needless murder of that man. And I believe that most Americans believe in their hearts that black lives matter. I believe that all blacks matter. All black lives matter. I really do. But I do not think there is sympathy for the methods that the Black Lives Matter official organization is using. On their webpage, Black Lives Matter. They have the dot com. They have this. We know that the police don't keep us safe. Really? You know that as, as a matter of fact and statement, an absolute statement. We know that police don't keep us safe. And as long as we continue to pump money into a corrupt criminal justice system at the expense of housing, housing, health and education investments, we will never truly be safe. We have a ways to go. We all know that. But I believe we have come a long way. And the statistics don't lie. We've seen a dramatic decrease in violent crimes committed against American citizens of all color over the last 25 years. And the idea of defunding the cops, the defunding law enforcement, we can't do that. That works against our goal of Black Lives Matter because black lives want law enforcement in their community. How do I know that? A poll was just taken and the results just came out a couple days ago. I'd like to read them to you if you don't mind. This is the Gallup organization. They are certainly one of the gold standards of, mer of polling here in the United States. They asked this question that had three possible responses of people of all races. Here's the question. Would you rather the police spend more time, the same amount of time, or less time as they currently spend in your area? How would you answer that question yourself? How would you answer this question? Would you rather police spend more time, that's the first choice, the same amount of time, second choice, or less time as they currently spend in your area? Here are the numbers. Asian Americans, let's start with them. They're the ones that wanted the least amount of increase in cop time in their neighborhoods. 9% wanted more time, 63% said the same amount of time, and 28% said less time. Hispanic Americans, big jump here, 24% wanted more cop time in their neighborhood, 59% said the same, and 17% said less. Let's go with white Americans next. 17% of white Americans. Oh, by the way, did I tell you this poll was taken after George Floyd and after the riots started? 17% said more time in our neighborhoods, 71% the same amount of time, and 12% said less time. And here we go African Americans, Black Americans. This question was asked after the riots had started. After the murder of George Floyd, they're asked, would you rather the police spend more time? 20% said more time. The same amount of time, 61% of blacks, 
or less time, 19%. Let me summarize that real quickly. Over 80%, 81% wanted the same amount of cop presence or more in their neighborhoods. And that's consistent with a poll that came out about a week ago, also from Gallup, that asked African Americans who had had some kind of interaction with law enforcement over the last year, they weren't interviewed if they didn't have some kind of connection with cops, but if they did have some kind of interaction with law enforcement, they were asked, were you treated with respect and were you treated fairly? 73% said they were treated with respect and 74% said they were treated fairly. Three quarters treated with respect or treated fairly. So do you think African Americans want us to defund the police departments? I don't think so. And it's not going to be helpful to them at all. And we are told to remember their names. And we should. We should remember the victims of needless crime, of needless death at the hands of cops. But it happens very rarely. And I'm going to take this opportunity once again. It's less than a dozen a year of African Americans that are killed unarmed, unarmed, at the hands of law enforcement. Whereas more than 7,000 African Americans are murdered each year. Most of them by other African Americans. That's the crime. That's why we need law enforcement. And I'd like to give you some names because we're told to remember their names, we're told to say their names. I'd like to give you four names. There have been over 30 Americans murdered as a result of these riots, killed because of these riots. I'd like to give you the names of four. David Patrick Underwood. David was a black police officer in the Federal Protective Service who was shot while guarding an Oakland, California federal courthouse. Again, the name was David, the name is David Patrick Underwood. Say his name. David Dorn, a retired African-American police captain who was killed in St. Louis while protecting a friend's pawn shop from looters. Go ahead and say his name, David Dorn. Oh, how about Chris Beatty, an African-American former offensive lineman for Indiana University who was shot dead in an alley in Indianapolis after leaving a demonstration that had turned violent. I'll say his name, Chris Beatty. And then finally, Italia Marie Kelly. Italia Marie Kelly, a 22-year-old, let me say it differently, a 22-year young black woman in Davenport, Iowa, who was shot in the back while getting into her car trying to escape protests that had turned into a riot. Let me read those names again. David Patrick Underwood, David Dorn, Chris Beatty, and Natalia Marie Kelly. Black Lives Matter. All Black Lives Matter. We can't defund the police. Is there room for improvement? There all will, there will always be room for improvement. There'll be room for improvement in all of us, always in our country. We call it a more perfect union. We are working towards a more perfect union. Black Lives Matter. All Black Lives Matter. Thank you for watching.